Thomas bill outside of special events, but that could all soon change. Good morning, I'm Jasmine Monroe, and here's what's happening in your neighborhood. While charities receive an influx of donations during the holiday season, the Challenger Learning Center wants kids to celebrate the entire year. Saturday, the Challenger Learning Center is hosting their annual Christmas in July toy drive for children in need. The community is invited to bring the new unwrapped toys to donate. And the event features cookie decorating, planetarium shows, and the space mission simulator. It's from 10 a.m. until 2.30 p.m. at the Challenger Center. After that event, donations will be given to local organizations and charities. And the second harvest of the Big Ben is working to keep school food pantries stocked throughout the year, but they need your help. Happening today is their 12-hour packing blitz at the Donald L. Tucker Civic Center. The plan is to pack 3,000 food boxes and 20,000 snack packs. The event begins at 6 a.m. As the school year quickly approaches, the Pack the Patrol car event is hosted by the Tallahassee Police Department is happening this Saturday. They are asking the community to come out and donate school supplies for children in need. The event is Saturday, July 29th from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. located at the Walmart on Appalachie Parkway. Supplies include backpacks, pencils, pens, and calculators. Food insecurity in Leon County is a reality. In fact, families in the 32304 area code see it the most. Luckily, food pantries are an option. I'm Terry Gilliam Jr. in Southwest Tallahassee, your neighborhood reporter, where a partnership can go a long way. Over 14,000 out of about 30,000 children in Leon County alone are on free and reduced school lunches. That number's from the second harvest of the Big Bend. Second Harvest works with 15 schools in Leon County to provide pantries. Those schools rank from elementary school to high school. Jasmine Kennedy Smith, she's a principal at Oak Ridge Elementary, one of the schools that's getting help. I find joy in anything that helps us to meet the needs of our students, and the food pantry is a very big part of that. Second Harvest says children who are consistently experiencing hunger will have a harder time focusing and learning in school. That can lead to a lower academic performance. Second Harvest launched a protein packaging room in 2023, making large amounts of protein available in school pantries in Leon County. In Southwest Tallahassee, Terry Gilliam Jr., ABC 27. The Leon County Sheriff's Office held its first kindness in the community event at Lawrence Gregory Community Center to help prepare over 50 kids for the school year. The event gave kids the opportunity to also interact with school resource deputies before school begins. One student, KJ Young, says he can't wait to begin his second grade year. Yes, I'm really ready to go to school. You really ready to go to school? Yes, I want to learn some new things. I'm ready. I'm most excited about seeing my friends and my teacher. And the children received school supplies donated to the event by Target, as well as played in water sprayed from one of the Tallahassee Fire Department engines. These days, there are so many options to watch content online. I think I'm subscribed to like five different services, but let's say that you wanted to watch a TV show or a movie and about half of them were generated by artificial intelligence. Would you want to know which ones were and which ones weren't? This isn't a reality yet, but it's a possibility in our future and a big reason why both screenwriters and actors are on strike right now. They want to have rules and guidance surrounding artificial intelligence so they still have jobs in a decade. I think if you go out and ask anyone if they want to watch stuff written by AI or, or kind of spearheaded by AI, I, most of them would laugh at that. Most of them would say, like, that sounds horrible. You know, when it comes down to it, I don't think people actually want to watch that. And that's ultimately the question that has to be answered. Sachin Darb Walker is a screenwriter in L.A. And he tells me he hopes there will be a strict cap on how AI can be used. There is not a, a like a viable path for it to have like anything more than a uh, supporting role in what we do. Writing is a very difficult profession um, and it requires, if, if you want to make a good story about human experience, you have to be a human. I mean, you just can't be something else. I also interviewed AI expert Chris Gomez Mufat, who is the founder of Promptify. It's a service that will soon let you design a template for AI to write a screenplay or novella. He doesn't believe the need for screenwriters will disappear, but he thinks they will see a major shift in their career. I think they will be the one that will prompt the generative AI to produce the story, right? And your ability to 
to be a good writer will not be in producing the right uh, uh, content, but rather asking the right question. Mufat says there will need to be rigorous testing for bias within the AI, but he thinks it will increase productivity. He also thinks it will open up the screenwriting industry to more people. I can compete with uh, uh, Hollywood just because of the technology I have access to. Whether AI becomes a huge part of the screenwriting experience or not, Dardwalker says he doesn't plan to use it. Tesla under fire. A new report claims the company installed software specifically designed to overestimate driving ranges displayed to drivers. Tesla is also accused of forming a diversion team to cancel service calls related to range complaints. Tesla has not commented on the report. A billions club is coming to Spotify. Bad Bunny, Post Malone, and Billie Eilish kick off the video series. It gives stars the chance to choose how they celebrate one of their songs hitting one billion streams. It's an offshoot of the playlist launched in 2020. NASA is about to launch its own streaming service and it won't cost anything. In addition to live events already offered on its website, NASA Plus will feature original video series available on most platforms. One more upside, all content will be ad free. Those are your Tech Bytes. Have a great day. He was only 47. Aneurysm. Did he have life insurance? Do you? No, you got to get on it. Check out Select Quote. Trust me, the peace of mind, it's worth it. Come on, Dad. Life insurance is too important to put off another day. That's why Select Quote makes getting coverage you need easy for less than a dollar a day. Now get up to a $2 million policy with no medical exam and same day coverage. Visit SelectQuote.com. We shop, you save. Zizol relieves allergies while you sleep, so you wake refreshed for a more productive day. Zizol works faster than Claritin, and on first dose provides the same relief as Zyrtec in a pill nearly half the size. Be wise all. Take Zizol at night. Bug spray works best when your family actually wears it. Get odor-free eight-hour protection from mosquitoes and ticks without the ick. Zevo on body repellent. People love it. Bugs hate it. Former President Donald Trump is facing new charges this morning in his classified documents case. The updated indictment accuses him of obstruction and willful retention of national defense information. The new charges center on surveillance footage from Trump's Mar-a-Lago resort. Investigators accuse the former president and one of his aides of asking a staffer to delete video to obstruct the investigation. That aide has been added to the indictment and is now facing charges as well. A new clash over military spending is brewing on Capitol Hill. The Senate passed a massive annual defense bill last night. It would authorize $886 billion in military funding and deliver a 5% raise to service members. The House passed their own version of the bill earlier this month. Theirs included proposals to restrict abortion and limit health care access for transgender people. Both chambers will try to settle differences over the bill in the fall. This morning, nearly 200 million people across the country are waking up to warnings about heat or floods as extreme weather continues to batter most of the country. The National Weather Service says flash floods are possible for parts of the northeast and south, while record-breaking temperatures will persist in the southwest and midwest. Scientists say this July will likely go down as the hottest month ever in human history. Christmas might be the last thing you're thinking about during this record hot summer, but right now is actually a great time to do some shopping for the winter holiday. Retail experts say there are multiple benefits to getting gifts now. For one, several stores are discounting items to make room for new inventory, like fall clothing and back to school supplies. Taking advantage of these sales will allow you to stock up on things like crayons for stocking stuffers. You can also save a lot of money on large items like electronics during state tax-free weekends. I also think department stores, they're really good to shop at right now because they're trying to move out their inventory. They're trying to bring in back to school stuff. So they're putting a lot of stuff on clearance right now. So if you can find shorts or even colored pencils, things that are back to school things, 
They're great to buy now and save for Christmas time. Shopping for Christmas now also gives you more time to buy a more thoughtful gift instead of just grabbing whatever's available at the last minute. Shopping early could also help you experience a more enjoyable December since you'll be able to focus on doing holiday activities with friends and family throughout the month. Everybody thinks about it from Thanksgiving until Christmas, and that's when the malls are crazy, that's when you're crazy, that's when you have other things to do. If you start now, your December will be so much better. You'll have time to make all those Christmas cookies that you want. You don't have to worry about shopping and picking up that last minute gift and fighting the lines and all that kind of chaotic stuff. She also says if you have an idea of what you want to buy, it's best to start tracking prices now to make sure you get the best deals. LeBron James' son, Bronny, is in stable condition after his heart stopped during a recent basketball practice. The medical scare is now shedding light on health issues young black athletes sometimes face. According to a 2020 study, black male NCAA Division I basketball players are more likely to experience cardiac arrest or death among athletes 11 to 29 years old. The study also found that black male college basketball players were 21 times more likely to experience cardiac arrest than high school male athletes of all races. Medical experts say there are several possible factors that put black male athletes at higher risk, like genetics, age, and underlying health conditions. Can we identify some of these conditions prior to playing in competitive sports? And the reality is, is while certain tests can uh, uncover certain conditions, unfortunately, even if you went through every single test imaginable. We'll never be able to prevent every single one of these cases. The issue of medical emergencies in sports was thrust into the national spotlight earlier this year after NFL player DeMar Hamlin suffered cardiac arrest during a playoff game. He was medically cleared to play football again in April, but Bronny James's potential return to the basketball court could be up in the air. He'll be an incoming freshman this fall for USC's basketball team. He's expected to undergo several new medical exams before he's cleared to play again. Uh, they'll be looking for evidence of genetically inherited structural heart conditions, genetically inherited underlying arrhythmia or heart rhythm problems, acquired heart conditions, such as uh, what happened with Mr. DeMar Hamlin and Commodio Cortis. That's an acquired condition. These are all the different types of uh, etiologies uh, or reasons that this can happen. According to reports, Bronny James had a cardiac screening several months ago as part of a program for prospective NBA players, and those tests reportedly came back home. This morning, the first thing you might want to grab is, of course, the water bottle. It's going to be another warm one, but we're adding in some more umbrellas, some rain jackets to the forecast, and that's for more of us this afternoon. Uh, showers and storms become a quite a bit more widespread. We're going to find that tropical moisture really pushing in from the east today, so kind of starting in 75 corridor southeast side of the Big Bend, and then pushing over through the afternoon. More showers and storms are going to stay around through the weekend as well. Now, it's not going to be a washout. There are going to be breaks of sun in between some of those showers and storms, but if you do have outdoor activities not only today, but for the rest of the weekend it's going to be important to listen out for some of that rumble some of those rumbles of thunder like in Crawfordville you know if you're heading down to the Big Bend coastline later this afternoon Crawfordville 11 to 5 I mean there's going to be definitely some storms around even offshore you'll see some storms kind of building throughout the afternoon now mostly cloudy start leads us in to a milder day than the last few I mean we're still going to top out in the upper 80s low 90s especially around the coastline but for the most part you know those thunderstorms really get going right there around lunchtime and kind of linger through the early evening hours and even right now across Wakulla and Franklin County we've got ourselves a very light shower still pushing in most of that active weather staying well offshore of the peninsula but this afternoon, we're going to find all those showers and storms across Jacksonville kind of pushing uh, mostly to the west from the east over the afternoon hours. You can kind of see here in our forecast and focus where those showers will start building up around 12. Those heavier showers kind of spitting in uh, right around 2, 3 o'clock, first for the 75 quarter and then over into the I-10 quarter, Tallahassee and the southwest uh, side of the Big Bend then included in that. Of course, things dry up overnight just like they have been over the last few days. That surface low is still spitting that moisture across our area on Saturday, so still need the rain jackets and the umbrellas over the next several days as temperatures stay mild next week. Showers and storms develop later in the afternoon and evening. 
So as we walk out the door this morning, the first thing you're going to grab is obviously the water. I mean, it's been a hot few days. I took a walk last night. Definitely a bad idea to do that at five o'clock before I went to bed because I had to take, you know, every precaution to cool off when I got inside and drink the extra water. But today, I mean, it's not going to be as hot. We do find ourselves under some cloudy, kind of sticky conditions as we walk out. But later this afternoon, that's when shower and storm activity really ramps up. I mean, we're looking at the 90s in the forecast for the next several days, actually finding ourselves more in the upper 90s next week. That's because that storm activity today, really through Sunday, starts ramping up through the afternoon hours. Now, Monday and Tuesday of next week, that's when temperatures are going to warm up quite a bit.